Hey, my name is Mike, and I'm going to show you how to convert or start getting started on converting your Pentair 5G over to um, a DIY solution. It's not going to cost $65, it's going to cost north of that, and also um, it's going to take tons of time. So, anyway, let's start from the light and move on our way up, okay? So, the first thing is I have a bag of goodies here that I'm going to dig out. The first thing is the light itself. So this is the light. It comes with a silicon uh, gasket. What I am going to do is I recommend actually removing this gasket and replacing it. So let's put this light over here. Here are the gaskets that I got from Amazon. Um, Impressive lens gasket. I got two of them. I think they're eight and a half inches. And so I got double of them. That's number one. Number two. They recommend sealing that um, those gaskets. So anyway, I use this kind of magic <clears throat> magic lube. Doesn't sound right, um, but it's it's magic, and it's luby, and that's going to go inside the uh, the seal here, and hopefully it gives it a nice seal. Lasts a couple of years. I would probably do it more. I never change the seals on these things. I'm on my fourth. This is going to be my fourth light. Onward. Now, <clears throat> the light fixture itself. This straight up sucked. Okay, so what you do is you have this light enclosure, and the thing was is that the other video that the guy shows that you could do it for sixty-five dollars. The problem is is that it's I think he's running um, twelve volts in. I'm running. I was running one hundred and ten. So what I did was I took the wire that was coming out. Well, I don't have a wire here at the demo, but there's a wire coming out coming into here. I, at the end of the run, I throw I throw on a twelve volt um, transformer uh, powered uh, DC. And then I measure it over here. So I'm taking my uh, my fluke tester, and I'm like, okay, what was what's, what's the story? No voltage. So I pick it up, and I'm like, shit, this thing is heavy. Then it's like, duh. The problem was is that this guy right here was taking the 110 and converting it to 12 volts for the board that's right that was running on here. So um, this this was then all sealed in this black resin. And uh, through trial and error, I used um, I used a, I used a heat gun, got some of it off. Um, I used a whole bunch of different things. I used a Dremel. I used a, a, one of those rotary tools to get everything out. And you got to chisel the thing, chisel it away. The thing is, you can't damage. You got to make sure that this thing is nice and flush. That it's nice and flat, and also that you don't want to cut holes or anything. It's a little bit rough here and there, but you don't want to screw around with this. So you want to say that otherwise. It's game over, time to buy a new light. So, but to get the black resin off uh, took hours and it was not fun because that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to seal everything so no water can get through. So, I'm going to leave that here like that and I'm going to put this in here. No, I'm going to hold on a second. The other thing I did was I took the um, electronics board that um, the Pentair had. And instead of buying, you know, and cutting and all that kind of stuff, I use this board. This is going to be my heat sink. So you'll see some of the leftover, I guess, circuitry uh, imprints on here. And I don't know if this is solid copper or not because it does seem to, like, bubble in places. Um, and it seems like it would be flaky. But it does feel like it's a solid piece of metal. So I'm going to leave it like that. So the, um, the LEDs haven't come in yet. I've ordered them two weeks ago from Alibaba, just like the guys said. Um, I don't know how sketchy Alibaba is. So it's going to wait and see type of thing. So I'm hoping they, they come in. Otherwise, it's, I have to come up with a different solution. Anyway, this is going to go in here. The LEDs are going to um, go on here. But before I do that, I got some uh, thermal compound. They built a PC a couple uh, about a year or so ago, so I had some extra. But I just bought this anyway. So anyway, it's thermal compound. I'm going to put it on here, and then I'm going to put the LEDs on here. And hopefully they mount nicely. So that's going to go like this. This is going to go in here like that. And let's leave that for now. Um, then, of course, you have the ring. Do yourself a favor. Tape, take pictures of everything you're doing. So that's going to go like that. So that's going to be the whole light situation. Now, the um, then you're going to have to get yourself... Because he had his transformer outside the pool, so he already had a, an enclosure. You have to you have to get yourself an electronics enclosure. So let me move this out over out of the way here. I'm trying to be fast because I'm trying to make this video interesting. So you have this electronic um, enclosure. This one's called Qualipsu. I bought it on uh, again Amazon. 
I hate giving them all my money, but it's Amazon. Anyway, so you have this, you have this um, enclosure board, and on the board itself, this, which is kind of, this is kind of the neat thing, is that this, it has a board here, which you can mount um, your electronics and then put it in here and then mount that. So you could do it all ahead of time. So here is, I have a 12 volt um, uh, AC 110, 120 in. Um, I think it's 12 volts and 60 watts out. It wasn't expensive, this guy. I've had some hit and misses in terms of success. And um, that's going to go here, in there, along what I do with it. <clears throat> ah, here we go. Is this uh, Quinn LED uh, driver module? I'm not going to have everything documented on. on you know, I'll have everything as a, as a Google Doc or something to share. So this is the one with the antenna. It's already pre-built. I think it's like another thirty. It's like thirty-five, thirty-seven dollars. Anyway, that's going to go on this board over here, and it's going to hook up to the antenna that comes out here. So this is going to. This is again going to be all enclosed here. Okay. So now you have the enclosure, and then. For safety, we're gonna have a quick safety talk. Is I bought this, I bought this, I bought some bonding lugs, and you see that should be it. And of course, the only thing I'm missing here is the resin and the LEDs, and I'll get into that once I start uh, getting further along into the project. Anyway, this, you, of course, your whole pool system is grounded. It has a whole grounding loop with the heavy gauge um, copper wire, like your motor, your heater. Maybe if you have a salt system, that's a whole. That should be all hooked up to the to this grounding loop. Now, even though I no longer have 110 coming into here, I don't want to take the chance of having some trace voltage or a short somehow or another going back through the line. So what I want to do is I'm going to have this. It's basically almost like a. I don't know what you would call it, almost like a something. I can't think of the word. But anyway, um, that's going to mount over to here. And what I'm going to do is all the, all the, ground, all the pieces that I'm going to want to ground, I'm going to ground into here. And then attach this piece, this grounding piece, over to um, the grounding loop in my, my pool. I mean, where I have all my electronic equipment. And of course, these guys help facilitate that by... Um, those guys kind of go in there and clamp it down so you have everything grounded name of the game. The name of the game is, the difference between what um, that guy in the video did and what, he, what, I, what I'm doing is that um, he already had a 12 volt system it seems and the, the light was already 12 volts. I didn't know that was such a thing because I, the original light in the pool was an incandescent bulb. So what I'm going to do now is um, is really kind of take, you want to take the smarts and this is the problem with the whole Pantera situation is that this, all the smarts were in the, the fixture itself so when the pool light would burn out um, now you screw it again. You got to take the you got to take the enclosure out, and all the smarts, all the like the, this thing, this transformer, this this big this big damn thing here, okay, had to go in the pool. And if there's anything that goes wrong, you you're screwed. So the whole idea is to keep it simple in the light. Keep everything as simple as possible in this light. Safety is paramount for safety first, and then get the smarts out of the pool. Put into an enclosure, have all your smarts here, and then you don't have to go through that stupid thing of you know on off on off on off to change the color situation. This thing, I think, the software, the app for this is now extremely sophisticated. Uh, not extremely, it's pretty damn good. I looked at the app; it's neat. And I'm gonna have, and that's another thing too, is the he didn't really explain well on how to set up the app in order to talk to this. So I'm gonna have a video on that as well. Okay, next day, these bad boys actually came in the mail. The the day I filmed that other video, let me disconnect this for this video. Ta da! All right, so what I did was I bought these uh, screws and bolts from Home Depot. So I bolted them down. Hopefully, you can get a good look at that. So that's that right here. And then um, I'll have a listing of which ones I used. So then I just use some thermal compound on the on the back of these, and then there. This is actually a solid copper, so uh, that kind of explains a little bit the price. The other thing I was thinking about is maybe if I could, I could probably maybe have squeezed two more on here. They would have fit, but I'm going to hold off for that for now. And the other thing I don't know if you can see this or not is this uh, this 
and take the antenna out. This is kind of cheesy what I just did here. Anyway, um, I hooked up the antenna. This, uh, this what do you call it? This board right here, this um, has to come out in order to get to the screws so you can plug in these wires. So you're going to be very careful. This shield, this communication shield, has to come off. Very, you know, just be careful. Um, I wish I would have known this beforehand. In order to get to the screws so you can plug this in. All right, let's give this a shot and see how we're going to communicate with it. All right. So one of the issues I encountered was when I added the wire from the junction box, from this junction box back to the pool light, the original light, the wire, I guess, was too long and it was getting some data issues. So I did order a data booster and I did put it at the end of the line where the light where the light is and that seemed to have helped somewhat. But if I put the, the booster really here at the junction box, that seemed to alleviate most of the issues. There's still some problems when you're like full bright, but otherwise it did resolve a lot of the issues. So in this picture here, what I'm doing is I'm just testing everything out. You want to test it out before you seal everything in resin. I ended up soldering these wires and also the, the data booster is at the junction box closer to the controls. And over here, I'm just going to bury everything in the black resin and that should take care of that. So in the next clip you're going to see is the actual pouring of the resin, the preparing of the resin and the pouring of the resin. Okay, so I'm following the directions. I specified I'm letting all the bubbles come to the surface so I mixed it in one container I marked basically I cleaned this Dunkin Donuts plastic thing and uh, I marked four ounces eight ounces and 12 ounces because this will hold 12 ounces when I had everything out I measured um, I put water in there sealed up the bottom and just um, used a measuring cup to see how much uh, water it could how much volume it could take anyway this is what's going on here now so I'm going to seal this bad boy up and I'm going to let it stand for 24 hours. We had a really crappy day yesterday, so it rained a lot. And let's see how this thing goes. Okay, so I let this sit for three minutes. Um, a lot of the bubbles did come to the surface. And here goes nothing. It's got the consistency of honey, I guess. And it's really got a like a greenish, a really dark green tint to it. So I'm just going to pour this in so I can get this and video it and Ooh. Well, this is pretty cool. Mm. I also put a dab of silicone on the bottom so there would be no leakage. I don't know how useful that's going to be, but All right, I'm going to take the knife and kind of get the rest in. But that was a good measurement, Mike. All right, that's it for that. Okay, here we go. Got my Alexa app, I don't know if you can see it, but turn pool lights on. Okay. Turn pool lights to green. Okay. Let's see how that flickers. Unless I turn pool lights to red. And if I go into the WLED app, if I lower the brightness, I get more stability. So I have to lower it even more for these purple colors. Anything that you start using more uh, LEDs, it starts freaking out. So I'm thinking, I'm suspecting it's my power source. But if I go to green, I don't know if you can pick that up on the video, blue, Purple, red seems pretty stable for some reason. Green also. The solid covers, if you go into the solid colors, once you start mixing um, multiple LEDs, I guess you're, you're, you're firing up different, you know, uh, drawing more power. I think white gets super unstable. So, if you start raising the intensity, that's when you start getting into 
the real freak zone. So, but I could live with this. Um, that's pretty much it. Blue, green, and red. That's it. All right, the next step I was probably going to do is I'm going to just probably change the power source and see how noisy this particular source is. Um, but otherwise, I'm 90% happy. And that's it.